Good morning, everyone in Australia. I am happy to join you for the second colloquy on the return of the Parthenon sculptures in the Nicholson Museum at the University of Sydney. Dennis, thank you so much for all that you have done to ensure a successful colloquy. My name is Carrie Douglas. I am the founder of Nine Muses News in Washington, D.C. I write about new trends in art, business, and innovation, and have a special interest and love for cultural heritage. It is Sunday, and I know you have heard from the elders who have been leading this initiative for decades. I also know you have heard from historians, educators, legal experts, and government leaders who are all literally in the room with you. So now the question is, why social media? Let's start with a little exercise. Reach over to the person or the people sitting next to you and hold hands. Bear with me, I know it's a little odd, but it will make sense at the end of my presentation. While you are holding hands, you are touching someone you may know or not, someone you like or not. Notice your feelings about holding hands and about this exercise. And now you can let go. I'll come back to this at the end. So social media, why social media? Very simply, it is about access and it is about power. Access to a global audience and power to share and exchange information. Social media has upended traditional structures of business, the news media, diplomacy, and international relations. Traditional gatekeepers of information and influence are no longer as relevant for the most part. There is a new freedom to exchange, share, and act together. New relationships are being forged and new dynamic leaders are emerging. Through access to a global audience with the power to share relevant information, others may be invited to join this campaign. This is the power of social media. This is the opportunity for the international campaign for the reunification of the Parthenon sculptures. Let's talk numbers. How big is the global audience? How much access is there? Just to note, LinkedIn has 200 million users. Facebook has over 1 billion users. Twitter has over 200 million active users a month. YouTube has 1 billion unique visitors a month. Instagram has over 80 million registered users. Pinterest has almost 49 million users. Those numbers are staggering. But let's look at these numbers in another way. Just as one example, because I am sure this institution has come up in discussions over the weekend. The British Museum states on their website that over the course of its 250 year history, they have had over 280 million visitors, probably over a million physical visitors a year. They also state that they have had 13 million visits to their website each year. They have over 200,000 followers on Twitter. They have over 400,000 friends on Facebook. Well, what does this mean? It means that over 280 million people have been told the story of the Elgin Marbles. Rather significant, but not insurmountable. The campaign to reunify the Parthenon sculptures, one needs to take the story back and then reach beyond and educate more people to influence new opportunities and guarantee the return of the Parthenon sculptures. Now look around the room you are in really literally look at everyone. With the opportunity of social media, now look at everyone in the room again and imagine how many people each person knows and engages with. You have gone from a hundred in the room to potentially hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions virtually in the room with you. You do have the power to make the change and lead the effort to reunify the Parthenon sculptures. 
As a campaign, you have the opportunity to raise awareness and inform people around the world of the facts, the facts, the history, the value, and the importance of a world monument intact, one that is whole, that transcends all geographic boundaries, and that unifies a spirit of respect, democracy, and humanity. Since I first became aware of the campaign, I must say it is fantastic to see the changes and advances made, especially with so many social media leaders around the world in this group, many of whom are either present with you in the room or presenting virtually at this colloquy. I must congratulate these leaders and invite more of you to join and use social media to advance the campaign. For those who may be new or reluctant to join social media networks, let me share a few tips. Often I am asked, how do I start? First, ask people to join your network. Sign up yourself and then ask your friends and colleagues to join you. And join the ones that you feel most comfortable with, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Then, share relevant, factual, truthful information in a variety of formats. Try video, try scanning historical documents, try photos, quotes, educational and news material. Then, very important, use the comments section following news articles or blogs or anywhere that you see an opportunity to share your knowledge and opinion. Ask your network then to respond as well to these news items. This comment section is really important for two reasons. One, you have the opportunity to share your opinion. And two, you can always continually assess public knowledge on the issue. Going along these lines, use the power of like, share, retweet, quote, to let others know that you've read and like what they have posted because their network will see that you have been there, you have read the item, and you support it or not. Lastly, if you want to monitor how much you have grown or measure your growth, register with cred.com or clout.com. Then there are some simple rules. Always tell the truth. Be authentic. Verify before posting, sharing, or retweeting. Keep it simple. Link, share, and engage. Be positive. Be kind. Be generous. And lastly, give credit. Everyone loves to have credit for the work or the item that they have found. Now remember the feeling you had when I asked you to hold the hands with the people sitting next to you. It can be scary or it can be a joy. Trust your instincts first and then keep building that joy. Keep that positive feeling. Nothing can replace true human interaction. Social media just amplifies the feeling amplifies the message, and amplifies the intention. This is social media in the modern world. You have the opportunity to share, educate, and associate with whom you please. If each person at this coll colloquy commits to three items, one, to join and link with each of the attendees, speakers, presenters, on as many social media platforms as you like. Two, to share relevant points of this gathering with your own networks. Three, then engage and share each other's relevant points through as many channels as possible. The global awareness and, this, and the importance of this campaign will only grow by committing to these three items. As the world understands the facts, the history, and the importance of the Parthenon as a world monument, and as Gary Viken, the former director of the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore said, the Parthenon is a world monument and deserves to be hold. Then what you strive to, to achieve will happen. The Parthenon marbles will be returned, and once again, the Parthenon will be whole, complete, and a world monument full intact. Therefore, engage with social media, give it a try, and make it happen. 
And for those of you in attendance, if you have any questions or need a little bit of help getting started, please do contact me. My email is kerrydouglas at mac.com. I am on Twitter at Carrie Douglas, and I am on Skype at Carrie Douglas and LinkedIn as Carrie Douglas. Please join me. Please send me questions. I am happy to help. Enjoy the rest of the weekend and the rest of the colloquy. Good luck. Thank you.